Hi guys, it's Gav here from DancePlanet.tv. Thanks for joining me as always. And in today's video, I've got guest Liam Twig from Manchester. So looking forward to be doing the prediction video, which is night eight on March the 22nd from the SSE Hydro in Glasgow, which is on Sky Sports at 7 p.m. Uh, thanks for joining me today, Liam. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for having me. No worries at all. It's great to have you on the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, I've been playing darts for around two years now. Uh, I joined a pub team three or four months ago, and yeah, I love the sport, yeah. It's great, isn't it? It's one of those sports that is looks easy to play, but it's really, really difficult. Oh, it's just a the, nightmare, the first, isn't it? The first time I played after watching the World Champs for the first time, I was like, oh, it looks quite easy what they're doing, but no, it's definitely not easy. <laughs> it's just so frustrating, isn't it? You know, you hit yes. one, you hit a 140, and then the next thing, as I said to people in my video, I'm the best 26 hitter in the world. Yeah. I call it fish and chips here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going into the games, the opening match is Daryl Gurney against Mincha Suljevic. Last week, Daryl Gurney drew with Whitlock 6 all. He had a 99.11 average and a 33.33% checkout. While Mincha Suljevic lost last week 7-2 to Cross, he had a 94.65 average and a checkout of 50%. How do you see this opening game going, Liam? Um, it's quite tough to call, really, because Daryl's scoring's been decent, um, yeah. but his doubles have let him down, definitely. Uh, but Mensa's been quite steady, despite, I think it's two wins, three losses. Yeah, um, and high averages but, as well. Yeah, um, I was debating a draw, but I'm thinking 7-5 to Daryl Gurney. I, uh, I don't know. I think this one, I, Gurney deserves his first win. He's been, you know, had so many opportunities, but I yeah. think this one has got a draw written all over. I'm going to go mm. six all on this one. Uh, the next match we go to, we've got Michael Van Gerwen against uh, Michael Smith. Last week, Michael Van Gerwen beat Price 7-3. He had an average of 104.8 and a 58.33% checkout. Michael Smith last week obviously thrashed Peter Wright 7-1, but he only had a 95.02 average and a 53.85% checkout. So the checkout was good, but he's not hitting high averages, Smith, is he? How do you see this no. one going? Um, I'm looking forward to this match actually. It has yeah. potential to be the best match of the night. In I my think opinion. so. Um, we all know Van Gogh going to play well regardless. Uh, but if Smith plays well also, this could be a really close match. But I'm going to say 7 4 to Van Gogh, as much as I like Smith as a player. Do, do you think Smith's going to raise his game? It's really interesting. I don't know if you've seen some of the averages from the Premier League, but he's actually the second lowest on all the averages on the Premier League um, for, for for this campaign. Although he's it, in joint top, yeah. He's got the second lowest average. It's only going price below him, yeah. Um, I think he's going to up his game in this one, but I think that uh, Van Gerwen's going to win this one. I'm going 7-5. Seven, 7-5. Five. Seven, five. Yeah, I think so. Next up, we've got Gary Anderson against Simon Whitlock. Anderson, obviously, last week had the um, six-all draw with Barneveld. Really lucky again. He, he did it the same um, with uh, Gurney the week before, didn't he? Yeah, um, got the draw, draws, but yeah. he had a uh, 93.67 average last week, um, a 60% checkout. While Simon Whitlock, as we know, drew with Gurney, he had a 96.38% um, average and a 40% checkout. How do you see this one, Garm? Um, well, Anderson's been in form recently, you know, with the UK Open win uh, not so long ago. Yeah. But he struggled in the Premier League, like three draws, it's, one it win. It doesn't make one sense, loss. does it? I, I, no. I, don't, I don't understand the difference why he's struggling. Yeah, no, but um, I, I have to give it to Anderson 7-4. I can't see Anderson losing or even drawing this. No, I think this is. I think Simon Whitlock is worrying times for him. He's, he obviously had them three straight wins. Then he's had a couple of draws and yeah. and all. But I can't see him getting anything. I think Anderson's going to come back in. There. I think Anderson's going to beat Whitlock quite easily. I'm going for a. I'm going for Anderson to beat Whitlock seven three. Okay. Yeah, I am. I don't know why. I've just got that gut feeling. Next up, we come to Peter Snakebite Wyatt against uh, Raymond, Van, Raymond Van Barneveld. Obviously, last week, Snakebite lost to Bully Boy 7-1 with just an 80... It pains me to say this, an 82.91 <laughs> average, 20% checkout, considering, he, you know, one from five. Uh, um, Barney last week um, obviously got the six all with Anderson. He should have won. It. He had a, but he only had a 92.483 dart average with 33.3% checkout. It pains me to say it with Peter Wright. But what do you think on this one, Liam? Um, like you, Peter Wright's been completely out of sorts recently. Um, I, so I don't know if 
he's, he's got a shoulder problem, I think, is what yeah, they're saying, they did maybe. Mention that, yeah, uh, I, I don't know if that's the reason for his poor performance or what, but um, I'm hoping Wright gets some form back, definitely, but... His, confident, okay. his confidence is shot, isn't it? it it's just gone. Yeah. It's. I think there's more to it. I really do. Definitely, definitely. Um, but Barney's been playing okay, so uh, I'm going to give this to Barney 7-5, I think. Yeah, I am with you on that one. Um, I never... I, and all my videos, right, it's really difficult because I'm a Peter Wright fan, as everybody know. I never, ever really bet against him, but mm. I am with you. I'm going to uh, a Barneveld win on that one, 7-5. Five. Uh, the final game of the evening, we've got Rob Cross against Gerwin Price. Rob Cross looked absolutely awesome last week. He beat Silly Rich 7-2. He had a 106.49 average and a checkout of 77.78. Gerwin Price is in all sorts of a muddle at the moment. He obviously lost 7-3 last week to Van Gerwen. He had a 92.91 av uh, average and a 60% checkout, but obviously only winning the three legs. Put loads of tweets out this week. I covered it in a video yesterday. I don't know whether you've seen them or not, Liam. What are your I thoughts did. on this one? Well, like you were just mentioning, Gerwin Price tweeted about what he had to say. Um, now, wh whether that takes some pressure off him or puts it on, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, but Rob's won his last four games, so I'm giving this to Rob Cross 7-2, I think. Yeah. I'm going 7-3. I think he might get free price, but I'm going 7-3. While we're on this one, what are your thoughts on um, the tweets for going price? You know, not not just for him taking maybe the pressure, like you say, he could be right taking the pressure off, but for the sponsors, um, for the PDC, and also for the players that want to be in his position and playing it. He's almost writing himself off. What, what do you think to it all? Yeah, it's strange to just write himself off. He can't expect to be top of the Premier League for his first one. You know, he's quite, well, he is inexperienced as a player as a whole, if you think about it. Um, yeah, it's really strange, yeah. It's, I just, I just, I just think it's, it, it's the other players. And, and the other thing that's crazy is, he's done this, he's been selected, I don't know if you see, to be in the World Series again this year, along with Daryl Gurney and a couple of them. Um, yeah. But to do that, after being selected to be in that as well, saying that you don't care whether you win or... I don't mm. know. It just... It don't make sense to me. He, I thought he was the sort of player that it wouldn't affect. Obviously, it's affected so many players over time, like Wes Newton, um, Mark mm. Webster, Yellow Class, even Michael Smith, and he's come back um, and doing really well. But it just... I didn't think Price would do it. Anyway, I just thought I had to chuck it in. So, mm, I think Barry Ern will be going, going absolutely oh, mad. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he will be. Well, listen, these are these are mine and Liam's predictions um, for night eight. Like I say, it's on March the 22nd. It's from the SSE Hydro in Glasgow. It's on Sky Sports from 7pm. Thanks for being on the show today, Liam. Really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. It's been awesome having you on. Now, listen, for all you other guys that want to add your predictions and get involved, please check out, uh, if you've not already re registered, at Fantasy Darts. It's www.fantasydarts.tv. I know that Liam's put his... How are you getting on on the leaderboard? Where are you? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I did last week's predictions and I checked the other day. I'd have to check back, but yeah. I'm not 100% sure. But I'll be definitely doing it again. This yeah. Week. Do add them on. It's 100% free to play. Um, also, for those of you that do like entering the tournaments, there's another one coming up this weekend. Um, the registration is going to be open on Friday after the draw for the European Darts Open. There's up to a £100 prize pool as well. So do check it out, www.fantasydarts.tv. And just before I go, it's also just been confirmed that I've got Robbie Congreen coming on the show next week. So if you've not subscribed already, please check that one out. Um, as always, I hope that you've enjoyed the video today. Massive thank you to Liam for being on the show. Uh, do check out dartsplanet.tv and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. Bye. <laughs>